Thanks, y'all. I'm gonna go tomorrow and have some surgery. I love you. Hey, you guys. I wanted to do a video on Bear and his illness just so I can share with you kind of what's going on and the process. That way, I don't know, just some information so that you have it. If anything ever happens to your ferret, you kind of know what to look for. And also the process um, that I did with Bear, that I'm going through with Bear in trying to figure out exactly what is ailing him and what we can do to help him be comfortable and happy and as healthy as possible. Also, I just want to mention that what I'm doing with my ferret and what my vet recommends may be different than what your vet recommends. I really don't know. But um, if your ferret is sick or you have illness, I would highly recommend seeing a vet. And, you know, if you go to your vet and you don't feel comfortable with what they're telling you, you can always go to a different vet and get a second opinion. Um, there's lots of options. So just because this is the way that we're doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way. And if you feel like this wouldn't be a way that you would want to do for your ferret, then I suggest that you talk to your vet. So about two months ago, Bear and Weasel were both really sick and I took them to the vet because they, um, they were, they were sick. They were laying around and they were really like mopey and Weasel just, they just weren't well. So I took them to the vet and it was, the vet said that they had had a helicobacter outbreak and gave them antibiotics and I gave it to them. Weasel got better. Bear never really got fully better. So he got better temporarily and then he, hi Wheezy. <laughs> And then he kind of just continued to lay around and be just not want to play or he just wasn't himself. So I took him back to the vet and um, at the time they took him the first time, they had felt some lumps in his tummy and they weren't really big. We did some blood work. His blood work was a little bit abnormal, but the vet said, let him get through this cold that he had and, and get through this outbreak of um, helicobacter and then we'll retest his blood and see where we stand. But he never got better. And over the last like week and a half, he got worse where he just didn't want to eat. He just was really sick. Like he just, I mean, he was eating and going to the bathroom. He just wasn't well. So I take him back to the vet and the vet said, the lumps on his stomach have gotten bigger. So the vet recommended that we either do an ultrasound and, and see kind of what the ultrasound comes up with, or do we, that we do an exploratory surgery and a biopsy and biopsy the lumps once the vet opens them up and goes inside. You can do, a lot of times when you do the ultrasound, it will result in you having to do some sort of surgery anyway, either to potentially remove the lumps if you can, or to do a biopsy so that you can tell whether it's lymphoma or whether it's um, the cancer that's associated with insulminoma. So I don't really, I could do the ultrasound and then turn around and have to do the surgery. And if the ultrasound is about $700 and the surgery is another $1,000 why wouldn't I just go and do the surgery straight away? Because I'm going to end up going that route anyway. So we're opted to, I opted to do the surgery. He's going in tomorrow. I have to drop him off in the morning and pick him up by five o'clock so that he can have the surgery. I had to call the vet back on Monday because Bear was so bad off that I couldn't really get him to eat. He was shaking. He was falling over. It was so bad. So take him back to the vet and the vet gives me it's like sulfur sulfate to coat his stomach. It's, I don't know if I'm saying that right. So you crush this up and you put it in two mils of water and you give it to him and it coats his stomach and kind of stops him, like, like allows him to be able to eat and, and settles his stomach down. And then they gave me the metrodiazole. I'm probably saying this wrong. My ferret hates this, even though it's flavored by the vet a little bit. He absolutely hates it and I need my husband to help me to give it to him because he flails around so bad that I can't give it to him by myself. Um, he also gave me a moxie drops and so Bear's been on that medication and then I also had to get carnivore care which is kind of like a food supplement like where if you have to feed them by syringe because they're not eating and you need to make sure that they have food in their stomach. I haven't had to give him this because Bear has been eating. Um, and when I started giving him the other medications, he was able to eat much better. And so I haven't had to like syringe feed him yet. So tomorrow he goes in for his biopsy. I'm really nervous about it. I don't like any time that your animals go under surgery or even humans. It's, it's always a risk and it's always scary, especially when they're not feeling well. And I know he's not feeling well. Now I'm going to give him his medicine. He can't eat anything tomorrow. So I'm taking all the food up at 12 o'clock. I'll feed everybody in the morning except for Bear. And then I'll take him and drop him off at the vet. 
and pick them up as soon as they tell me that I can. And I'll keep you guys updated through this whole process so that you can kind of see what we're doing and what comes of it and how the treatment is. Okay, so they get a quarter. He gets a quarter of this medicine. Um, two to three times a day is needed. And then you just have to crush it up. So I just crush it like this. It's it, He actually takes this really well. So I was actually surprised. I thought that it would taste really nasty. But um, he's, this is not for you. You don't want this medicine, weasel. You don't want this, dude. This is for brother. I'll give you a treat, though. How about that? You want to have a treat instead? Yeah, here. Come here. I'll give you a treat. I got a treat from um, my funky ferrets. He wants one of those treats. Sam made you some treats. Here, let's get some treats. Here, you want these? All right. Now we gotta go get two mils of water and mix it up. Okay, so I have two mils of water in here. It actually is, doesn't seem to be like enough water, but that's what the vet said to do. So that's what we're doing. So I normally mix this up and then I get a bowl with some um, pickled parrot juice in it so that after he takes his medicine, he can get the taste out of his mouth, particularly the Metro, whatever is all, I'm saying it wrong, so I'm not even gonna try to say it again. But, so we're just gonna mix this up. And then I have to get, this is the Amoxy drops. It has to be kept in the refrigerator. It's actually like that bubblegum stuff you got as a kid when you had an ear infection. He's getting two and a half mils of this twice a day. This is not for you. I know. You guys think I have food, but I don't. This is the one he hates right here. I know. He knows I'm going to give him medicine. All right. This one he only gets a mil, and he hates it. I'm so glad he doesn't get a lot of this. This is as needed. So the one thing I will say that's been super cute is that the ferrets won't leave Bear's side. So I, every time I come in here, they are sleeping with him, especially the younger ones. So Leo and um, Oscar just like lay with him constantly. Even the older girls, it's like they know he's sick and they just stay with him. It's just, it's like, it like breaks my, it's like the cutest and saddest thing ever because they're laying with him because he doesn't feel good, but they're also just being so loving and sweet. And so it's really cute. Okay. My bear bear, the night before surgery, he's sleeping. So I know his eyes look crazy, but that's how he sleeps. Oh, he's awake. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll leave you alone. I love you. I'm sorry. I love you. Okay, give me one little kiss. Um, excuse me. Hi. Hi. I just need bear. Hi, Bear. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, babies. What are you doing? I just need Bear Bear. Can I just have Bear, please? We can't all go to the vet. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, so I'm on my way to take Bear to the vet and drop him off. For surgery. I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, so Bear is home from the hospital. I'm getting ready to bring him in here. Um, he's got food and water, and he's restricted to this area. With the double nation cages, you can block the top part by putting the ramp up. So we're going to see. He's not going to love it, and his siblings are going to hate it too. But we have to do it. Now your brother, he don't feel good. He don't feel good. All right, I gotta get him out and put him in his bed. The babies are very interested. All right, hold on. Let's scoot him back some. Mama's gotta put him in his bed. You guys can't play with him. I know, I'm sorry. Okay, so he's home. He is sleeping. He's really tired. He's got stitches in his tummy. We set him up a little space. So basically the vet said, um, 
it'll be two weeks before we get about two weeks before we get the test results back but it says that um, there was a small nodule in his pancreas. This type of nodule is consistent with insulminoma. There was also enlarged lymph nodes of the small intestines. These lymph nodes were more consistent with inflammatory bowel disease or viral disease. Both nodule and lymph nodes were biopsied. And then it says the results will take two weeks. All right, so we're gonna mix some of this up. The vet said I should try to feed this to him tonight because he hasn't eaten. Um, they said he might not wanna eat. We gotta get him to eat something. So, we're going to try it. So, it's one part of the mix to two parts of water. So, I used one of these little scoops right here. And we're going to do two parts of water. I think you want to try to get all the lumps out. He's still like knocked out of sleep, but he hasn't eaten all day because he had to fast before the surgery. He had the surgery and he hasn't been awake enough to eat. So the vet was concerned that he hadn't eaten and he said he probably wouldn't want to eat, but I have to get him to eat something. All right, he's asleep, like sound asleep. I'm gonna turn the light on. I was trying to avoid it, but Hey, buddy. Hey, little Duke. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, baby. Oh, go hi. You want to get up and eat anything? He's a little hungry, just a little hungry. Hey, buddy. Okay, come here. Hey, baby. buddy he's like wants no parts of this i know you're shivery i'm gonna i'm gonna get you back warm look i got some of this oh baby sit up that's it that's it oh yeah There you go. Let's do, let's do this so you can. How do you like that? You like that? You want to try to drink it? You want to drink it off the spoon? Look. Oh, that's a good boy. job good boy good boy so he ate a little bit more and now he's asleep because he's super cute and he climbed in his little blueberry made by little fur fleece I knew he would love to have this it's his favorite Okay, so this is day four of our recovery. He's much more bright, but he's a little depressed because he's in the cage a lot. I can't leave him out to run around. I do take him out a couple times a day and let him be out for about five minutes or ten minutes at a time. But he's got stitches in his tummy and he wants to go hide and then I can't get him. And so I don't want the other ferrets to try to help him with his stitches <laughs> so he's been really good about not messing with them but I also think he doesn't feel good because he's not getting any medicine yet for the insulminoma which is pretty much we're pretty sure that's what he has with potentially liver disease but I talked to the vet on Friday um, we'll know more for sure as soon as we get the results back but he definitely is a little blue and not feeling 100% so hopefully we can, don't itch it, baby. So hopefully we can get him, um, hopefully we can get him some medication soon. 
to help him feel better. I just like to let him get out a little bit. And he gets so sad being in the cage. He's not a caged animal ever. So for almost his entire life, he's never been forced to be locked in a cage, except for the first, like, maybe six months. Um, and even that wasn't all the time. So this is really hard for him. Don't lick the sutures. Don't lick the, 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 the don't lick the sutures. I know it itches, baby. I know it itches, baby. I know, baby. It's your sisters and brothers. You don't like those treats. Where are you going? Don't go far. You can't go far. I know. Him do not feel good. Come here, Lily. You want to see your brother? Lily, you want to see your brother? Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Okay, don't. Don't do that. He had surgery, so we have to be gentle. He can't go anywhere. He's got to stay right there. He's got, about to go back in his little cage. We're just giving him some loving. We're just going to give him some loving so he knows his sisters and brothers love him. Let me take the tunnel out. Let me take the tunnel out. Stand on him, Weasel. Don't sniff his butt. Oh my god, you act like you haven't seen each other in a, in a year. Weasel misses his brother. And his brother misses him. <laughs> They've been together for so long. Almost five years. So, I think it's hard on Bear. I think he feels happy when his brother is with him. Bear's also really good with the baby ferrets. And they miss him so much. And even though he's here, they don't get to see him. And so... It's hard. Okay, good morning. It is like mm, maybe 7.30 in the morning. Um, so I'm with the ferrets because they we do our whole morning routine. Bear decided he was going to go to medical school overnight and take out his stitches in his stomach. Fortunately for me and probably for him, um, nothing is infected. Everything is closed, but he's still not technically supposed to have the stitches out for another week. So he has literally not messed with them the entire time he's had the stitches until I, this morning when I came in. And I guess he had just had enough. And so they are like hanging on by a thread. So I'm going to call the vet this morning and see what they want to do because I can't leave him like that. Um, I don't think he'll put the stitches back in, honestly, because it's closed. But I just don't know how, what the risk of it reopening is. I mean, if they're supposed to be in for two weeks, I'm sure there's a logical reason for that. Bear did not seem to think so. So I'll let you guys know what happened when we go to the vet this evening or this afternoon or this morning whenever they get me in. My vet is really good about getting me in quickly. So that is awesome. All right, I will keep you posted. Tell everybody that you went to vet school overnight. Let's show them your tummy. Come here, show them your tummy. Come here, let's see. Look at that, buddy. You went to medical school? You gonna start paying your own bills now? You call you Dr. Bear? Please don't mess with his little ears. All right, let's go get your medicine. I know, you miss your sissy. You miss your sissy. That's your, that's your actual sissy. Oh, look at that. All right, I wanna show you guys this. So this came in the mail from Little Fur Fleece. She made this for Bear as a gift, a get well gift. It's the cutest thing ever. It's a bear bed. He loves it, I love it. It's so cute. She's the sweetest lady ever. Um, anyway. Oh, you're mad at me. He's tired and he really doesn't want to be in this cage anymore. And there's like nothing I can do about it. Especially while he's removing his stitches. You're going to fall out. Just let, listen, let, let mama talk to the vet today, please. And I will try my hardest. Oh, buddy. Not, oh, 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 baby. He's very upset because I won't let him stay out. And I feel terrible. So the ferrets are, come here, bear, bear. Totally digging these treats from, um, oh my God, my brain is not working. <laughs> what, you love these? Where do we get these from? See, we get these from Claws, Paws, and Rawls, which is owned and run by My Funky Ferrets, by Sam at My Funky Ferrets. And these are your favorite, right? These are your favorite. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's show. Okay. It's serious, huh? Okay. Here, take a piece. 
Take your piece of, go, go here. Okay, 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 I can't, okay. Mama's one person and there's four of you and I have one hand. Well, technically I have two, but I'm using one. Thank you, see you later, alligator. Here, come here, Ruby. Ruby, here, baby. Oh, you stole that piece? Okay, that'll work. See you later. Bear, bear. Oh, bear, bear. So, bear ripped his stitches out, which I think I said previously. So now the vet says that it look really good. He has to go back soon. Did you just steal his? Oh my gosh, Luce. Lucy, Lou, Luce, that wasn't, okay, don't fight over it. Here, oh my goodness gracious. Wow, Lucy, that is something, girl. Okay, do it that way, it's cool. So there goes Bear inside the tunnel. Um, so he's been out and about with his brothers and sisters for today. We're seeing how it goes. Even though he ripped out the top layer of stitches, there's also stitches on the inside. So he is good and stitched up. His incision, um, I showed you guys, looks really good. Oh, bye-bye. Look at these chunks. They still have their winter coat and they look adorable. Would you like another piece? You would? Okay, bye-bye. Love you. Love you. And this is Stella and Chewy's. They eat it wet, but they also like it dry. So I do it both ways. Um, when I don't give it to them dry, they don't always like it. So... They get it different ways. They like to take them inside of these blueberry huts and things that were made by um, Little Fur Face on Etsy, who also made the bear bed. She's amazing. And she made the little sofa that's behind that trash can, but I don't think you guys can see it. But it's been in previous videos. Anyway, bear's doing good. I will hopefully have the test results back in a couple of days, and then we will probably start treating him for his condition if my vet is right about what it is, which he seems fairly confident in diagnosis, but we just want to confirm it so that we're not treating him for something when we should be treating him for something else, which is good. I just want to say that this is Lucy's spot. I know the curtains are kind of like crack-headed, I think, a little because they don't go all the way down, but these windows are so flipping weird. So I'm just gonna end up making curtains. I don't want the ones that go to the floor. And if I don't get the ones that go to the floor then I'm stuck with 62 inch and this is what happens. So mama's just gonna make her own curtains because that's it. Look at you, you so stinking cute. You, she sleeps in, I find her here like every single day. And she loves when the sun's shining, it's her favorite. I can't wait till summer comes or spring because they really like miss being outside. Here, have you blankie. I love you. Don't sit on her face. Oh my goodness. Why are you so cute? I love you. What are you doing, you handsome little peanut boy? Look how big you are. You love your fluffy feet. You're such a chonk. Look at these two. You love your brother? You do? Bear Bear, you a sleepy mama woke you up and gave you medicine and now you're mad at me? I know. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Oscar, <laughs> I love you. Go back to sleep, Bear Bear. Okay, you guys. So I have super kind of exciting news, I think, for me. Talked to the vet today. Got the biopsy results back. Bear did have a tumor. That was cancerous. But it was removed, and that's what was biopsied. So um, he still has the insulminoma. We have our prednisone here, which we're starting officially. Um, but... It didn't look like the cancer had spread. So right now it looks as though we got all of it. Um, and I mean, of course, obviously he could get another tumor, but so could any of my other ferrets. So my vet said it isn't like he's prone to more tumors because he had one. He's just prone to this illness because he's a ferret. So I'm really happy to know that my vet really didn't think it was cancerous. So finding out that it was cancerous, but that we removed it is amazing. I can't tell you how good that makes you feel. And knowing that he doesn't have any signs of cancer in his body at the moment also makes me feel great. Um, so we are starting his medication because right now Bear really still isn't trying to eat his regular food. So he really will only eat this, which is an emergency. It's kind of like um, carnivore care, but it's called emergent. It's called Am Amera Aid C carnivore. And it's like the only thing that he'll really eat. I mean, he'll eat his other food, but not enough to give him enough nutrients. So when he, so he's like gets shaky from not eating. So the vet said that it's fine that he eats this, that we need him to stay healthy and eat properly. So right now we're going to use this if that's what he's willing to eat. The vet's hoping that the prednisone kind of helps balance him out a little bit more. Um, he's definitely doing better just being on the antibiotics, but um, 
I don't know. We're going to give him his new medicine tonight. I'm sure he's going to love me for it. But got to do what you got to do. My baby's okay, though, right now. And that's honestly, like, the most important thing. I feel so happy. Um, I'm going to take him back on Thursday and get whatever stitches he didn't remove himself out. And then we should be good to go. So I'm going to feed him now and give him his newest medicine. Right, little buddy? He's looking at me like, shut up and feed me. So I'm going to do that for him. And probably for you guys, too, because I'm sure you're sick of hearing me like blab. So Bear's latest thing is this shivering that he does when he eats. But what I really think that that's about is he's not eating enough of his food during the day. Um, I do come in and try to feed him periodically. But every now and then he's been doing this shaking. Um, but he stops, like, almost within probably about a minute after starting to eat. So... Oh, my little baby. But honestly, he's doing so much better. Like, so much better than he was doing. I'm so happy. I was so worried about him. He looks better. He's more bright-eyed. Right now, he's just shoveling food. His prednisone is inside of there. He doesn't seem to care. So that is awesome. Um, that makes one less thing that I have to have my husband help me give him. So with the other medicines, my husband holds him and I give it to him. He flails around like a flounder. He hates one of the medicines. Say, hey, everybody, it's me. Tell me you're doing so much better. He's like, put me down. He is not a holy, cuddly little fairy. He never has been, except for when he's sick and he's not feeling, he's feeling really good right now. So he does not want to be held. I want to show you his belly. I want to show you his belly and I can't hold him up like that because he doesn't like it. Don't touch. He looks really good. So I talked to the doctor over the phone and I got all the lab results, but um, we go back tomorrow to get the actual stitches removed. So I don't actually have to see the doctor tomorrow. So, um... We're just going to get those last little bit of stitches that he didn't get out. Out. He is doing so good. He was playing yesterday and acting like his normal self. And I can not even tell you it was like the best Valentine's Day ever. Like best gift ever. Um, when I came in here to let them out and he was running all over and just being happy and his normal self. Like I wanted to just scream at the top of my lungs. I was so excited. It's so hard to watch them be sick and just not be like a shell of themselves. It's it's so hard and it makes me so sad. But watching him jump and run around and play, that was like the best Valentine's Day gift I could ever have gotten in my whole life. It was the best. So come to find out, the vet called a couple of days ago and said that the mass or the the nodule that they pulled out was actually cancerous. Um and that they did get it out and that when they did the biopsy they're able to look at that mass and kind of look at the vessels and all of the the way that the blood supply was and all of that stuff and kind of get an idea if that has spread the vet did not see anything that indicated that bear had to like cancer still left but um the biopsy results also showed that the, the, they did not believe that that tumor had spread or that the cancer was anywhere else inside of bear at this particular time there are a couple different types of way that cancer kind of forms in that situation if they're really small itty bitty tumors a lot of times they you can't remove them and they do spread and it can happen pretty quickly is my understanding the bear by the grace of god and i'm not a very religious person um the tumor that they took out they got it out and as it stands as we sit here right now <laughs> bear does not have any kind of um malignant um active cancer but he does have in Solmonoma, he is on the medication. I was going to talk a little bit more about that, but right now that's a kind of a different video. It would take, it's something that I really would want to delve into and take a little bit more time to put together. But there's someone on YouTube who did a phenomenal job at explaining this um, condition and disease in ferrets. And I really would refer you to her video because um, she already did all of this and I don't see the, I mean, I could do it and I guess it would be a different take on it, but to be honest, she did a great job. So if you're not familiar with my friendly neighborhood ferret, um, I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you want to know kind of more details about insulmonoma, how it works, how it forms, how to prevent it, what to like, check that video out. It is such a great video. I watched it when she made it a while back, but, um, she did a really good job and I just think that since I really don't have the time at the moment to put that type of video together and I don't want to give you incorrect or pieced together information that's not cohesive and makes a whole lot of sense all in one form, I'm going to let her video do that because it's really good. What I will say is for me, 
the main symptoms that I saw him bear were just that he was very tired. He was so tired. He wasn't himself. He His bowels were all messed up, which I don't necessarily know were 100% related to um, his insulin. I think that Bear had two things going on kind of simultaneously. Um, and as far as the liver disease, the vet is keeping an eye. If So the way that the vet would treat that is that he would leave him on antibiotics for eight weeks. Um, two, or th two different antibiotics and there's another medication. I will speak to my vet tomorrow. It doesn't appear like, it appears like the levels are kind of going back down. So, you know, your liver filters out all of the things in your body. And so there's some reasons why that stuff could fluctuate. So we're keeping an eye on it and we're doing blood work pretty consistently that goes out, not like pretty consistently like every day, but enough that the vet is watching it. If we choose, if the vet chooses to think that Bear needs to be on those intensive antibiotics for a couple of weeks to try to help reduce that or if that still seems to be a problem, then that's what we'll do. As it stands right now, he is not. He just finished the antibiotics for his surgery. Um, and I'm going to speak to the vet tomorrow to see what he wants to do and how he feels about the liver. We were going to revisit that once he had the biopsy results back. And I did talk to the vet over the phone to get the biopsy results, but um, I'll be able to talk to him more in depth when I go in tomorrow. So if any of that changes, I'll let you know. Right now, we're just treating the um, insulin monoma condition. He, Bear, is doing so much better. It's completely like night and day. I am really lucky and I feel really lucky that Bear didn't have um, cancer all over his body. It's been a rough month for me. My, I lost in my previous video, I talked about losing my little dog Blondie. Um, on the third, the day after Bear had surgery, I took my 11 and a half year old border collie, Australian shepherd Roscoe to the vet. He was one of those dogs that had a lot of anxiety. Um, and he was very reactive, he's sweet, but in order to get his nails trimmed or do anything like that, the vet had to do it. They took him into the vet for his nail trim, and while they had him asleep to do that, he was, my, that dog, my dog had, like, he was, he was a unique, he was unique. Um, they found that he had cancer, and it was all over his body, and it, the way that the cancer, it was, it had originated on his spleen, and the way that that kind of cancer works in a dog is this, that it creates these pockets of blood, um, it's pretty gruesome, so I don't really want to kind of get into it because it's sad and it's just a lot. And it's a, it gives you a visual that you can't let go of. Let's make a long story short. We did some x-rays and some testing and the cancer had spread to his entire body, which he just really was not showing any signs. The problem is when those blood pockets bust, which is ultimately most of the time how that happens, it's bad and it's quick and it's painful and I have a that dog was 65 pounds he did not like the car it took two people to get him in the car it took the vet and two techs to get him out of the car um he was the best dog and he was loyal and he loved me he his only job in the world he thought was to just be wherever I was that was my boy um but to bring him home and let something like that happen and then not be able to have him be in pain while I tried to get him to the vet um, to be able to put him down once that ultimately happened because that would be the, the was too far gone to do surgery seemed really cruel to me. Um, I didn't want the last hours of his life to be in pain and so I had to make this terrible freaking decision uh, to put my other dog to sleep which was horrific and heart-wrenching and sucked a freaking lot. So this last month, like between the end of January and now has been an emotional roller coaster with my animals. Um, I love them all so much. I, I would do anything for them. And I am really grateful that I am able to support them in all of their medical needs because, oh my God, did I spend a lot of money this month. I don't care. I would do it again tomorrow. But um, losing both of my dogs that I had for over a decade in less than three weeks from each other, I have to tell you, is like the most worst emotional. F I can't even. What's really crazy is that I, my older dog was really sad because his sister had passed. And so we had made arrangements with a rescue to meet a puppy to try to, you know, bring another friend into his life. 
So the day before I'm supposed to go get this new puppy, my dog passes away. But I've already committed to this puppy. I've spent weeks looking at her. I've waited for her. Um, it's like she came from a rescue where they rescue the parents and then they let they get the dogs out of the shelter before they give birth. They let them give birth and then they rescue out the moms and the, and the puppies. Because I have so many other animals, um, it's really hard to go to the shelter and find a dog that, that may get along with cats. And so I have to be really careful so that I don't create a lot of extra chaos in by bringing in an animal that may just not get along with other animals. So a puppy was the safest way to go and I still wanted to rescue because I don't want to go out and contribute to the overpopulation of animals. So I got this little puppy regardless of the situation that was going on um, because I had already committed to her and because we kind of fell in love with her and we spent a couple of weeks picking her out. And so I have a new puppy, her name is Savannah. I'll put a video up um, and show you. She's a little bit of a wild child. My trainer is coming in tomorrow um, to my home to do some training with her. And we are going to just get her through her little puppy stage. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, it's been the most crazy emotional pet roller coaster life. So yeah, that's just my update about Bear. And I guess the rest of my fur babies too, which I try to not focus so much on since it's a ferret channel. But to be honest, like my fur children, all of them, ferret or otherwise, like they're my life. And so it all kind of intertwines itself. And so I figured I'd share the rest too. Maybe help explain why I haven't been making so many videos or why um, I haven't really had a lot of time. Because in the midst of all of this, I still have my Etsy shop. I'm still working. Um, I went back to work partially for the law firm. They had asked me to come back. They begged me to come back. I'm not trying to be like um, conceited or what do you call that? Like pump my ego up. Um, they just asked me to come back. And oh, so I did agree to do that part partially um, because I they're like family to me. And if they need help um, and I ran their office for many, many years. And so whatever, the extra money helps right now, I guess. So I'm working a lot and I have my babies and it's just been so crazy. And I miss you guys so much. So hoping to go back to some sort of normal here shortly but thank you guys for all your support and for caring about my little boo I love all my babies and I, I can't tell you guys how much it means to me that you care all the messages and um people that follow my Instagram and my Facebook the fairy tales Instagram and Facebook and just the comments it's it means the world to me and I, I really want to thank you guys think she wouldn't play look at her she's trying so hard to play with them What? What, do you want to play with them? Savannah, you're gonna hurt your teeth. 